Hi guys, it's Frankie from Frankie Tech. Good to see you guys again. And I'm here guys just with a quick take video of my one week time with the Realme X2 Pro. Now, once again, I want to say thank you to all you guys who were supporting me, leaving those comments this weekend about hitting 100,000 subscribers. I'm so blessed, and I've decided to just kind of take it easy this weekend, but I did want to just give a quick update on how my time has been with this Realme X2 Pro, and I do also want to do a, just a quick comparison again with the Realme X2 and answer just a few quick questions you guys have been having. So what has the one-week experience with this phone been like? I got to say from just a perspective of value owning a phone like this feels so good because when you're talking about value there's nothing better on the market at this point and i think as of right now the mi 9t pro has been surpassed by this realme x2 pro from the design and the really kind of decent build quality. It's not the best build quality, but I think it does the job all right. To this very nice kind of Neptune blue back. It's not for everyone, but I do think if you like the glossy look, you'll still like this. The center placement, I don't mind as well. This nice kind of nice gold accent around the 64 megapixel uh, Samsung GW1 sensor is great but the real win here is with this display that 90 Hertz refresh rate I have enjoyed using all the time and it is no different than the one from the OnePlus 7T. Fluidity of the software is also solid. I think that is one of the major things I've noticed about ColorOS 6.1. It has been performing very nicely. All the apps kind of work very well. Now is it to the smoothness of Oxygen OS 10? You know, I'm gonna do the counterpoint here. No, it's not, but guess what? It is much smoother than a lot of the experiences I've had using this software. And now we know that ColorOS 7.0 is gonna come out, it's gonna be a Realme fork of the software, and hopefully we'll really do something better with the software and deliver a more stock-like experience. So from design, display, with the Snapdragon 855 Plus, eight gigs of RAM driving the performance of this thing, dual speakers, I mean, considering the price of this phone, which if you can get the lower, lower end versions of it for under 3,000 Hong Kong dollars or basically under 400 USD, there's nothing better on the market right now. You saw the camera samples I sent, uh, shared with you guys with all those videos I did earlier this week. It is a great sensor, you know, for daylight shots. I just feel in nighttime, it is where the camera struggles a bit more. And I think you notice, like for example, on shots like this, see where we had a regular wide shot and then the ultra wide. I mean, all these phones struggled kind of with this type of shot. And you notice that here too, really good lights with just really good quality of a sensor with the GW1. But when you switch, to the wide angle, you get a lot of this kind of muddiness in the darker areas. But to be honest, I really do enjoy shooting nighttime shots with this camera, especially when there's enough light like this. So I think when it comes down to camera quality, this phone is delivering as well. So my one week review, just kind of overall, is that this is one of the best value phones on the market and it may now surpass the Mi 9T Pro as the value affordable flagship king now color os is kind of the achilles heel i feel of this phone and it just is something that i don't you know that i don't enjoy using on a daily basis i found myself as i said using the oneplus 7t far more just because that software experience is next level and that's just my own opinion now quickly talking about battery life on this phone i have been testing this battery out quite a bit and it is rock solid the 90 hertz refresh rate doesn't really do anything to make this thing go down i think the standby is what i've been mostly impressed by because i've been using the 7t a bit more in the last couple days the standby on this phone like over a night will go down four or five percent maximum so it will last you and even if you're not using if the phone is idling it will do a really great job as well it definitely will last you two days at the very least in light use and you could if you needed to kind of power through a heavy use day it will definitely last the full day as well so now just quick wanted to compare here to the realme x2 the regular realme x2 and really just answer that question i think a lot of you guys were asking well frankie tech the realme x2 pro seems like an amazing value 
But guess what? The Realme X2 with its Snapdragon 730G and still decent build quality. Yes, it is plastic on the edges as you, as you can see right here, but it still delivers a lot to the table. A very fast fingerprint scanner. What are the things that you're giving up? And is it still worth considering the Realme X2 now that the Realme X2 Pro is out? Well, there's a few nuanced differences here I wanted to point out. So one is the build quality, obviously. We got a metal edge on this phone. It just feels a lot more premium, but we still got that Gorilla Glass on the back of the Realme X2. And I do appreciate that they didn't skimp on that. They easily could have put a plastic back on this phone, but they didn't. Another difference I think that you're getting, a benefit you're getting with the X2 Pro, and maybe you notice it here. Let me bring it close. Do you notice anything? Well, if you, just with the discerning eye, you will notice that the teardrop notch on the X2 Pro is smaller than the one on the X2. So they've reduced, and the kind of similar 7T teardrop notch, the one that's been reduced by a certain percentage over the previous generations, is the one that is on this phone. The regular X2 is still using that slightly larger teardrop notch. Now, you see from a distance, you wouldn't notice that, but when I bring it up close, it is far more noticeable. The bottom bezel, though, is exactly the same. In terms of performance, I think that's where you're going to see a major difference. Well, let's go to display first. In terms of display, that's the other feature you would need to decide if it's important to you, is that 90 hertz refresh rate. And it really does make a difference. You can't unsee it once you do. But you know what? I don't mind that this phone, considering its price point, the X2, is still using 60 hertz. It's fine for daily use, and it shouldn't be a problem. It's really only when you put it next to a phone like the X2 Pro that you start thinking, oh, I'm missing out on it. I'm missing out on it. Guys, if you unbox this phone, the X2, and you just start using it, you will not notice because it's just one of those things you really have to just start using and then you can't unsee it but for anyone who hasn't seen it don't worry about it performance now we get to that one part where i think there's a lot going for the x2 in this regard snapdragon 730g it is one of the best chips and i've said this this is why i've loved the mi 9t so much the 730 series of chips including the 730g it's just one of the best balanced chips on the market when it comes to battery, just optimization and efficiency. It still does a great job. And if you look, for example, at the scores I got on Geekbench, I mean, sure, they're not to the level of what you would see on the Snapdragon 855 Plus phone. Yes, it is far more powerful a chipset. But guess what? It's not a deal breaker because this is still terrific scores. This is close to Snapdragon 845 scores from a year ago. And that, you know, any phone running an 845, for example, is still doing a great job. So it's, yes, it is a mid-range chipset, but I think for all your kind of daily needs, it should do the job just fine. Now, in terms of audio differences, dual firing speakers, bottom firing single speaker. So if you really do need that dual firing speaker set, you, We'll definitely get that on the Realme X2 Pro. And then last but not least, the cameras, as you can see here, we got a similar kind of look and setup between these two phones. And we've got that same 64 megapixel Samsung GW1. I'd say in the cameras, that's where there's actually a lot of overlap. And if you're at least using the main sensor, they've improved some of the other sensors, but the main sensor will give you kind of similar results here, which is why I think the Realme X2 Pro is really punching above its weight class in that department. But I guess the point is, once you start factoring in a lot of these little improvements from the X2 to the X2 Pro, from the design, the 90 hertz display, slightly larger, display as well just because basically the teardrop notch is reduced so just less intrusive from a notch perspective improved performance obviously with the top of the line chip dual speakers and slightly better cameras once you factor all those things in it may make a difference to you enough that you'll want to consider this over the regular realme x2 but i'm going to leave that up to you guys i still think if you're looking at it 
Both of these phones have the same benefits and they both have the same cons. Most clearly being ColorOS 6.1 that I'm just not a big fan of. And if you don't think that that's an issue, then you won't have any problem and you can pick up either of these phones because they do offer, I'd say, now compared to the Mi 9T and the Mi 9T Pro, these are almost kind of the, the new Mi 9T or new K20 series for fall 2019. These two phones in this Realme X2 series are offering terrific value for all your daily needs. But anyways, that's just a quick take video here, guys. Thanks for watching it, and stay tuned. More in-depth reviews and stuff will be coming soon. But just enjoying the 100,000 right now, guys. I'm still kind of, I'm still pinching myself that it happened. I'm like, did this really happen? It happened. And I want to thank you guys all once again for the support. Stay tuned because I will be having that Me 9T giveaway video coming up very soon. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, and if you haven't followed me on Twitter, make sure you do. You don't want to miss out on this final giveaway on the road to 100,000 now complete. That's it for this video. And if you liked it, give me that thumbs up. And if you love the content of Frankie Tech, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon for future updates. Thanks for watching guys. Gonna go on and chill with the family now. Family day, better get back to it. And this is where I leave you by saying, this is Frankie Tech signing off. Have a good one.